Okay, I guess we're uh, coming in live. WWCR, and we're back. Z Live, ZFNT, the Zeph Report, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Frankie? Hey, Frank that I. post filter you guys are you're putting on there, What's the last that? couple songs, it's like a rotary post filter. Rotary? Rotary. I don't know. It, it's kind of, it's like a 15 cycle something going on in there. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's, man. I was, I was listening called to a that broken. song going, yeah, I know that guy that made this song. <laughs> you, you know, kind of like that. Duran yeah. Duran? Not that one. No, no, the one before the Word Received, I think. Word Received. Awesome. Oh. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Kind of airy pro, pro mix. Wow. God. Pro mix. It, pro mix. Yeah, I just learned that yesterday. <laughs> hey, well, good morning, I, man. I've only been sitting here for like six years trying to learn how to mix something. <laughs> anyway, it's so, cool. What's that? So, yeah, I, you know, I only, uh, I only addressed the red e cigar to Trish because I felt like I was leaving her out. You know, I did not, I did not even get to see that she my can, name was look, on the package. He, can, he just grabbed it. I'm sorry, and he's taking it over, and, I, and that's that. I should just give it, give it to no, her. No, no, that's fine, Harley. Not at all. I'll send you another one, man. Don't worry about it. But uh, yeah. Um, a- anyway, look, it's. I, I'm so overwhelmed. I, I now I'm not getting uh, volume. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get volume. As soon as I get on Skype, See, something yeah, happens to. The, how's that for volume? You got dude. It, not for anything, but my little cursor thing was moving on its own just before I uh, came on. We've had a couple other people report that <laughs> well, me, over this past week too. That they let me explain the... something. Skype. It's it's really. I, I got to the bottom of what happened last week. It was. Not no, like supernatural. I'm... Skype has... You a... had the automatic gain setting turned on or whatever? Yeah, but it's now taking control of my, my back-end audio um, Oh, yeah, it's reaching back into the giant gizmo. So it's, <laughs> it, before it didn't do that, it would just adjust the volume like if you were distorting, but now it's reaching in, so... I don't think that Skype was made to be cohabitable with Cubase <laughs> or no, something, but, right? No, I mean, no, come on, man. No, what it's doing is it's... If you move the volume... On the automatic adjust setting, it will move the master volume on the computer. While we're talking geek man, did you guys hear about the most uh, the the most amazing thing ever to happen in computing ever that happened this week, man? Or, the, or at least it was announced. Okay, I missed that. My, Microsoft has uh, an exploit in their rendering of the fonts, which means that any web page you go to, any document that you might open could contain this uh, this uh, uh, virus and infect your computer, man. So in other words, all of these super secret computers even, I, I if they're my... connected to the internet and someone went to Drudge Report, they're infected, man. It's amazing. What? Okay, it's, yeah. I yeah, go to Drudge Report. That's my homepage. No, just not to pick on Drudge. I mean, any page, you know, okay. NASA.gov. Yeah. It, you know. And we have a new, a new uh, guest chiming in that I've been talking to on email. His, his name is John. Another John. Not John from SoCal, but John who has figured out the realm of gang stalking kind of. Uh, 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 it's hard to explain. Cool. Hi, John. John, how you doing? John? Are you there, sir? I, you can hear me. I can't hear you. Is that oh, it? Oh, no. Please. No, Skype's working okay. Must be the connection. Okay, so I'm not... Uh, I thought I added him to this conference. But no, man, you know, the, the whole thing, all of this private information is not private. Everything on your computer is public. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it is an interesting world it that was we live in. Anyway. Facebook, you know, because, you know, everyone's, uh, like, relationship and their children and blah, 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 right? For, just from Facebook alone. Yeah. And just wait until That's right. everyone's little, you know, personal diary of pictures gets dumped on the internet. I don't think, what, I think there's happens. so much information, nobody really cares. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to. Uh, I was stoked that Francesca added me as her stepmom. Mm hmm. Oh, Facebook. that's sweet. I would add you as my stepmom. You would. I mean, you okay. know. I'm actually the, trying to put a call into this uh, this guy now. John. Stepsister, maybe? Stepsister. <laughs> not not even you step, know. man. Sister. John, are you there? Oh, no. Come in, John. Something's happening. I think I'm, John, are you there? Hello. Now you can probably. Uh, let's see. Hello. Oh. Dude, so, so I can I got hear the, you now. Uh, I, got okay, the, I can hear you now. Off of iTunes. 
Okay. Uh, John has called in the show. John, we're live on WWCR, and I'm glad you called in. Um, you, and this is the first hour. This is not like a guest hour, so you just have to find time. You just got to jump in, okay? What, okay. What's going on? We, uh, we talked uh, on the, um, via email a few times regarding the, uh, the, 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 the a very interesting theory of yours about gang stalking and the whole mind control, hive mind theory that you had. <laughs> yeah, and and you well, let's hear it. Yeah, well, he it it. But now you've you. It seems like in the last email you kind of walked that back a little bit. Yeah, I did. I uh, I I had you know I thought I'd really finally hit on it. It just seemed like all the dots connected, and I was convinced that you know that uh, I I don't know is it Spielberg somebody did a, a whole series you know it was like a three part mini series on on the alien thing yeah kind of taking yeah. in all aspects of the alien contact and agenda and all that and um, uh, you know and the whole thing was surrounding the implant you know and that at the end there was this young child this girl that was born by a union I think of the angel and and uh, or the the alien and she was kind of this blessed offspring and she was able to remove the implants from everyone I'm not sure what the point was there but anyways um, I started thinking well you know they're used because I believe that you know this has been going on for decades the the abductions mm -hmm. and the and whether or not the implant is really something physical technologically wise or it, it's more just spiritual you know a, a Mm -hmm. a connection, a possession type thing, if you will, yeah. That, yeah. that takes place. Um, I started thinking that, you know, behind the scenes, that there's such a power of darkness now, you know, pervasive. Oh, it's insane uh, now. Well, it's it's gone mainstream now. <laughs> so, so I was thinking, well, this street theater and all this stuff that I've gone through, you know, for long periods of time on and off over the last, let's say, 15 years. So hold on a second, though. You say yeah, that that it, it's more now because this is what I've been wondering about. Uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, the gang stalking, demonic activity, whatever you want to call it, is it more now in the, like the past three or four years than it was before or no? Because I can't tell. I moved um, too much. John, what do you think? Well, I don't, I don't know about with – it does seem there's periods of time where the attack is more, you know, extreme against us. Okay, I was just listening to you and you said it's more, you know, kind of like alluded to it's more now. And I'm just checking yeah, to see. Well, what I was saying, yes, kind of, sort of, in the sense that, okay, there's been more people having these abduction experiences, you know, in the, in the millions or hundreds of thousands, and it's, it's increasing all the time. And um, I've even come across many people myself that said, oh, yeah, I remember a period of time disappearing, and we think maybe, you know, I mean, I come across this with a lot of people. And um, so I was just thinking, well, well when you were mostly the gang stalking is the, is, is the demonic forces behind the scenes throwing people into the street, street theater, whether they recall much of what they said or did during that episode that was directed at you as a target you know, person. All right, person. now let's explain they, street theater. Street theater is when the, 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 that suddenly a group of people gang up on you and they start, say, out of the blue harassing you right. in, in a public area. And it seems subtle, cool. way. and it's yeah. and it's they're okay, making noises, bumping right. things, bumping into things, making whistling sounds, making grunting and groaning, coughing sounds, clearing the throat sounds. Right. Am I right? Isn't yeah. that a, do you, saying things that directly to relate to something you were just doing? Right, 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 right. There's all kinds of aspects to it, and I started believing. Well, mostly it's these alien demonic entities that that are directing this through this implant process, which, again, I don't know if it's, there is a technical side, a real device to it, or whether it's just spiritual and it's depicted as having a technical side to it, you know, a real biological implant, highly well, that, advanced thing. I don't know. Well, I know but exactly what you're talking about when you're talking about uh, street theater. Or, you, you know, I know exactly what you're talking about. We, we had it so, so ramped up that, listen to this, there's a guy across the street, uh, like I would say, a made man, right? When we were in L.A., Trish, uh -huh. the guy, he was the Mr. Like, Pakistan. drug czar of, of L.A. He was in charge of all the pharmaceuticals coming into L.A., like a, you know, a government uh, agency, federal job. And he was connected in with, uh, like on 9-11, they called him. Well, anyway, he said he was tracking us, and he said he had infrared, and then, you know, which, which is basically an, an microwave, and 
Then one night when I was standing out, um, I saw this big array come up off of his roof, oh. aimed right at us. And he'd been not only following me, but coordinating with uh, other uh, webcams and people so that he had me on like closed circuit TV all, all day long. Like wherever I would. He did finally admit uh, the night before we left that area that our God was the correct God. Right. And he was explaining. Your God is the correct God. Yeah. So he was. That's right, dude. So so he was doing it to us and they were moving things around in the house. And, you know. Did you guys ever see that South Park where the antenna comes out of Cartman's butt? It's, no. it's a huge antenna that broadcasts to outer space. <laughs> I did see a South Park <laughs> this like morning uh, making fun of the Occupy Wall Street they really uh, tear people. Up that and whole uh, thing with the aliens and the and well, everything. Man, well, it's but, awesome. I mean, it's this so guy would just sit in there, you know, yeah. like a, uh, behind his control booth of computer or whatever, and, and basically aim that microwave thing at across the street, literally aim it at us. He had it very sophisticated. It would be hidden uh, when he wanted it hidden. It would come out of the roof, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. And then there'd be like white vans wow. going by with cages and, you know. See, the what thing year, is. What year was this? I mean, when was this taking Oh, this, gosh. This was in uh, about 1998, right, Trish? Right before we moved out yeah. of uh, L.A. 1998, 1999. I, think, I don't know what I'm talking about on this subject, but just for me, for, for my, I had to figure it out because I'm OCD and and if I don't, it'll bug me, you know. So I figured it out enough, and I let it alone. But I'm with you up to, up until the point of the end plant. But I don't think there's any technical nature to any of this. Well, there is. Well, there is. To, I think I there is like on this. some implants that there's people that have yeah. had them taken out and stuff. Um, yeah, there there is there is that, and then but then there's guys like this with the microwave. But it was also coordinated with pretty much a lot of people in the neighborhood, right. and there was also people following us. And, right. and they were filming us, so it it was all being kind of uploaded. All yes, in court. but mine was my realization of this started in 1998 as well. It actually my recognition that something very bizarre had come up around me was even earlier 96. But mm-hmm. you know, it full, more full blown as it got in into 1998. I I, I would just say that. Um, I've cycled back. Now, as far as the implant thing, they're probably, well, you know, when, when you're attacked by, uh, it is possible that demonic can come through and cause um, things to, you know, tumors and things to show up in your body when you're under demonic assault or whatever. Right, and right. There's that so, too. Mm-hmm. Because it's electromagnetic energy. Right. And and that can, uh, you know, uh, they've obviously can can upset things. Now, who else do we have? Do we have, is that John from SoCal? That's John from the desert. How you doing, buddy? Okay, so, so now. So two Johns. Yeah, we've got John and John. Well, we've talked by email with John, who has uh, told me that when you were 19, and I guess I was like 17 or, I was 17 at the time, these triangle craft were following me around. Okay, there was that connection to the, tra- and, and it was all connected to the Satanists, I know I'm going to sound crazy. I know this sounds completely insane, to except those who understand. But it was it was all being orchestrated when I was. And you reminded me of it in your email back mm-hmm. in that age, and also connected in with the satanic ritual people who do satanic rituals, and they were tied in with these somehow with these triangle craft that was uh, seemed to be organizing the whole thing, and so the people were all given over to this force. But see, what you you were talking about the Ezekiel's wheels was kind of uh, interesting to me because the angels themselves were the spaceships. Right? They they could become the, creatures. the ships. And then yeah, that's the correct. The whole thing is supernatural. It's not some kind of because we would find more artifacts around. We'd find well, like the crushed, you know. Well, the triangle the, the triangle ship was just floating over my car. I just. I know, me. dude, but we would have found pieces of the triangle craft if it weren't supernatural. I mean, I'm not, I'm not I don't saying know. it wasn't yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. saying it was a, uh, like a fireball but then, or but a then get this. Well, maybe they have. But that was maybe tied in with, did. and then they threw me into the uh, loony bin after that, you know, after um, complaining. Now, was that six when you were 16 or when you were 17? Se- 17. 17. Because when, when I was when I, 14, and I'm two years younger than you, so I was just thinking, I was when up I got, in Alaska, you were down in but, L.A. So when I got to the hospital, I mean, so the shrink is uh, from the military, okay? <laughs> and the, um, the nurse there, the head nurse, I, I'll never forget, she had like pointed ears, okay, that, that were like almost elf-like, um, you know, just something that didn't look quite right. And, um, you know, the, the same phenomena with the same um, thing that was going on outside was going on in there as well. 
So I had to try to escape. I did escape eventually, you know, out of this kind of lockup facility. And, um, you know, it's been an ongoing thing. I just felt that they were in cahoots with – well, here, let me explain the motivation. Here's what's going on. The whole motivation was to, you know, get my soul or my spirit out of my body and then put in their programming or their spirit or their oversoul. Starting to snow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've had a wild morning here this so, morning. So the, the thing is, is that, that I saw them doing that with other kids. And what would happen is they'd, get, they'd scalp one guy's soul, you know, say he's about 16. And then the next thing you know, he's acting different. And, he's all, and then the next thing you know, he's going home with his parents and everyone's happy. And then he goes so, ho- home. So check it out, man. I, I cut out the, you know, the beers mostly. So at he was night, possessed. You, you know, as kind of a diet thing. <laughs> what what was that, going and, on there? Go and ahead. Now Freddy. I feel like uh, working out in the morning. <laughs> hey, I made it three times this week, man. That's so awesome. Proud. Okay. Well, yeah. what do you think was going on back there? And what, why do I have this idea that these kids, and I've seen this elsewhere as well, where they would change suddenly, and then they were perfectly acceptable, and they became like society's darlings. They were no longer rebellious. They were conformed, and 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 they were just like. Probably, oh yeah, man! They sold out. But they had no, they, they had no out. emotions. Like the emotions weren't human anymore. It, you know what I mean? Everything was a game, and everything was funny. When was this, Zeph? That was back in 1972. Oh, Zeph, how about a fifth column? Probably before you were born, right? <laughs> just. I'm Who that? I'll okay. tell you, I had, I've had a few instances like that, and uh, I firmly believe I've been abducted and, you know, things like that, yeah. and an implant, and I haven't had any, um, call it sounds in my head for a couple years, but uh, I remember one time, it was really loud, I would hear the emergency broadcast system, like yeah. in the middle of the night, I'm sleeping, That's and I would hear, bah! That, yeah, really loud. That's it. That's and, it. Uh, that's I'm getting it. a little concerned about hey, we got, it. We got having that big test about the emergency broadcast system Ooh. on the ninth. And, yeah. Uh, uh, could that be eleven nine for people? Eleven nine. How strange. Who, who hey, we, we got? We uh, got brother Pat calling in. Patrick. Hey, Patrick! Hey. Congratulations, man. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Good. Okay. Trish, tell him what I said. Zeph said you were going to win. I was what? You were going to win that game. Yeah, man, we we it was good. We uh, awesome. Good. Everybody was uh, pretty happy. Obviously, we won, but you know the 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 other thing about this is mostly that a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of players that played yesterday uh, did uh, broke a couple records, so that was, that was wow. pretty good. Yeah, twenty twenty three. Yeah. Woohoo! But on the game before that, I knew it was going to be a struggle. Did and oh Trish- man, it was it was. You know what's funny? Because five minutes, no, actually five minutes within the within before the end of the game, we um we were down two points, man. And like Vancouver, it's a hard place to play because yeah. it's a big dome and it's super loud. So it was like one of those things. Like man, there was so much noise, and but oh. it was you know games like that are always fun to play in Patrick- because. It's, Pat, brother Patrick here, he, he, he's a, a professional football player in Canada. So I've just. I posted a, a great picture uh, somebody had posted on your wall of you uh, kneeling and praying. Yeah. And I posted on my wall too, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one thing I always do, man. Because going in to any games or any situation in life, you know, it's always sometimes it's, it's so, a big battle. Yeah. So the, so the yeah. topic we have today, we also have a, a new caller, a brother John calling in. Now, brother John is. Uh, and, and Brother John and Brother Pat and Frankie yeah. and Trish and me. So we have this. It's We're loaded up here, folks. Um, but the topic is, you know, gang stalking, going mainstream, weird demonic activity. Uh, that ties directly in with all the alien activity, hive mind stuff. Well, I had, I, I've had a, a – back then, I'll tell you, in 1972, same gang stalking. And I was uh, drugged and poisoned and all kinds of stuff back then, wound up in a coma in Denver – and, you know, I'm just saying that it's been a long struggle. I wish I had known then what I know now because I would have been able to just give everything to Yeshua, to Jesus, and just go that way because I'm telling you that's what got me out of it. That's what delivered me Amen. out of that mess in L.A. in 98. I completely had a, a, a reconversion because I'd always had Jesus there, but I would only call on him on emergencies. You know what I mean? I wasn't really completely... 
you know, there. And you then, knew in the back of your mind he was the real deal. Right, but I mean, this thing was so big, and I had completely underestimated it. And there it was happening again. The same thing in 1972 was happening in 1998. And then that's when I gave my everything to Jesus. I gave it all. I just said, that's it. You know, kill me if you like. I'm beyond even committing suicide. It's, I mean, I was seeing like huge 50-foot-tall uh, images of um, a clown figure Ew. who was Lucifer. And he was like hanging uh, over this... Uh, this residence that didn't exist, I was hallucinating, and I, I can't even go in, I can't even, I can't even describe. There are people at three in the morning dressed up in tuxedos and black tie attire in a house. So I look through the binoculars, and as soon as I looked at them through the binoculars, quite a ways away, they would all go to the window, a big picture window, and wave at me in a mocking manner. Okay? So if... <laughs> <laughs> nice guys. No, I'm just saying. I don't know if you can relate to that. I don't know if anyone can relate to it, but I'm sharing it because of the fact that I do believe this is going um, totally mainstream and will be affecting everyone the same way I was affected. I'm in a good position now because I know I, I know what I'm doing. At least I know I know what to look for. I know I can I can help people to understand. It's not. First of all, you're not crazy. But but second of all, it's not just a, some guys behind a. It, it, it's not just a few guys behind a in in a room somewhere deciding what they're going to do with you. It's bigger than that. It's huge. It's supernatural. Go ahead, anybody, jump in. All right, because when it's a bunch of guys in the back room, then you got to kiss their butt, right? Then you got to play their game, or they're coming get you. Well, there are guys in the back room, but those guys in the back room. Okay, uh, what's happening? Something's I'm hearing, happening. I'm hearing bleed yeah. through. Someone turned down their radio. John, is that you? No. Uh, no. Okay, uh, John, uh, what do you think? What do you think of this? Um, well, I was going to say a couple things. This is the new John uh, here. Uh, <laughs> new one John. thing is interesting <laughs> that you you know associated it with the uh, witchcraft going on. Mm -hmm. uh, my experience was like around in '82 or '83 when I when the Black Triangle it was right. Uh, you know, 100 yards or so away from my father's house out in the Mojave Desert. Okay. I was born wow. in Los Angeles in 62. Um, I spent um, years in California. I started college out there. My dad's place is out there close to Barstow, outside of, in Newberry Springs, outside of Barstow, and that's kind of where I spent. Uh, we always stop there for gas. That's, right. That's the gas that's stop. The last half of my high school years, you know, was growing up under the stars there. You know, um, yeah. so uh, that's where it happened. And I just thought because, you know, I knew the military had bases out there, China Lake and the, and the, where the space shuttle was landing, Edwards and all of that, which I've been to Edwards. Right. Um, you know, and I know they have secretive facilities there for engine testing and things underground. But, anyways, I just thought it was somehow, I, at first, I really just didn't think alien. I just thought, well, this is some way far advanced craft that they're working on, man, mm -hmm. because not a bit of sound. As right. a matter of fact, it seemed to absorb sound uh, when it would move, when, as it was moving over me. And it seemed like it was only, you know, maybe 150, 200 foot up. It was huge, like almost as big as a football field. Yeah. Um, it, it was completely silent, and it seemed to absorb light. The dark was a dark that's not just dark. You know? Yeah, the light, that, the light that it would have wouldn't go beyond the craft. It would, it would stay, right. stay with it. Yeah, that's, I had the exact same uh, thing with that triangle situation. And then other things where there were people that, would be, uh, that were being taken and then disappearing completely that, that I had known, like, you know, fly-by-night friend, you know, someone you just meet, you know, hitchhiking down, you know, again, we're young, hitchhiking down Sunset or down one of these streets or up the Pacific Coast Highway. And then I'd, there'd be people I would be with, and then, then they would be taken or, you know, never seen, never heard or seen from again. So that kind of thing was going on. And anyway, very, very frightening. Go ahead. Who's just going to say it was known out there the the uh, the Satanist activity out in that desert area out there in yeah. that valley. Manson. There's a know, lot of darkness out there. There was reports that you know of the child uh, sacrifices. Uh, they 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 dug up evidence that right. you know that there were characters that were doing you know child sacrifice that they had tracked kind of to Newberry area out there. And I know there was a lot oh, of, of drug drug uh, labs that, you know, meth labs and things that were out there over yeah. time. Yeah. There's a lot of the, stuff 
bad stuff going on. Well, out you know, when we were there the last time we uh, we we were passing through, and um, you know what was really bizarre is the people that were in that. There's like a, a gas station and a subway there. You know, the subway. The, yeah. There's a subway sandwich place in the gas station. Everyone in there looked completely. You know, like like there was one guy that came in. Who just stared at Trish and me like like hostily staring at us for and I'll ne- never forget. Remember that guy, Trish? Yep. And and he was just staring openly, and there was it was completely demonic that place, you yeah, know. And then then there was kind of like Indian people from India, who uh, were the uh, owners, I guess, of the gas and the and the uh, and the sandwiches. And I was just trying to go through the line, get my Subway sandwich, and sit down and eat it and leave. I, you know, did not. That, that guy was demonically possessed. It, what what was it that he had written on his shirt? Remember some anti Jesus, yeah, thing. yeah. So, but he 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 peeled out of there after. But I, I always wondered why I felt this. Start. You know that gas station. There's only yep. it's a Chevron station, right, John? That yeah. You're talking about the Newberry exit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's right. And I there. used to work. There used to be a little, uh, you know, mom and pa uh, like market there too that I used to mm-hmm. work in when I was in high school across the street from there, but now it's something else where they closed it, it, it up. There's, it it <laughs> reminded me of this movie called Race with the Devil with Peter Fonda. It was like oh. a, a 70s movie that scared the you-know-what out of me. Um, it was like that. It was like they were all on the same page. That happened to me one time there when I walked into the – there's a little bar there, and I, I, I don't remember why, but anyways, I mm-hmm. walked in there. Um, I wasn't really hanging out there, but there were some pool tables. It's just, just beyond where you're talking about, the, the, the station there mm-hmm. over. There is actually a bar there, and down, right down the road a couple miles is the – they filmed a movie, the Babylon, whatever it was. Uh, uh, Hollywood Babylon? No, there's a little restaurant. Kind of like a little A-frame restaurant, it's just sitting there in the middle of nowhere. Right. And they, there was actually a Hollywood movie that of some, I mean, I think it was called like a cult film or something. You know, some bizarre little film that was mm-hmm. that was made surrounding that little restaurant right there in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. I forget the name of it, Babylon something. But okay. anyway, well, yeah. yeah, you know, okay. Well, the desert's known for that. Here we have a desert too, and and you know, New Mexico is known also for. You know, and wherever you have crank and drugs and criminal activity, you're going to have de- demonic activity. They go hand in hand. Satanism goes hand in hand with criminality because most Satanists are criminals and they cover for each other because they're doing crimes. I mean, if you sacrifice a child, obviously that's murder and that's a crime. And you wonder, well, how do they get away with it? And the other, and the other example, the other, the, well, haven't you seen the Hollywood movies where you know the sheriffs uh, showing up at the uh, at the ritual? You know. <laughs> Um, yeah. that's how they get away with it. it. It's, it's a, you know, it's a sad, horrible, awful thing in America to, to the bigger question, America, America is going down. And the reason, well, I will tell you this, um, down. I had a period of backsliding and I ended up in the wrong places, uh, there in Barstow. And, uh, one night, uh, when I showed up at what I believe was the house of all the big thuggies that ran the the drug scene there. Guess who showed up? Walked up to the door right behind me was like the the local detective who had pulled me over one time and you know given me the whole rundown. And then I realized later he was just playing with me. He was part of it all. Okay, uh, and then you yeah. got out. Well, thank God you yeah. got out. Yeah, and, I did. I got out. And, and later, a little later than that, but that's where it started. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kind of. So there's there is a lot of scary stuff out there. But when I was out there in high school, during my high school years, I really was didn't see any of that. Didn't notice any. You know, I was, I, I you know, I was a believer since I was young, and I was just involved in things in high school. And I never saw any of that until years later when you know I fell away. Yeah, uh, it was when I started seeing all that and hearing about all that and whatnot out it, there. It's extremely scary if you're targeted because. Obviously, they, they laugh because, you know, you can travel somewhere and then there's someone waiting for you at the bus station, the airport, or your destination that, that gives you the street theater to, to, to indicate, yes, we know you're on the lamb. And look, here we are ahead of you waiting for you. 
<laughs> yeah, so now I don't really think it's just I, – I know there's the alien angle and involvement, but I did kind of backtrack because the whole thing – I had a period of, you know, where it wasn't happening for a while. It, you know, everything was calm and quiet, and then it all started again as I was moving from Iowa back down here to Florida again where I'm at, with, back with my wife, and it all started again down here. I mean, like Clearwater, where I live, is the headquarters of the, you know, Scientology, yeah. and I – where I came here for a few days to visit my wife before I actually moved back down here, and the skies got dark. I mean, it was so obvious there was, like, warfare, even in the skies over this city. It was any minute I expected uh, Harry Potter to swoop down, but not the good one, you know, uh, if well, there is a good one. Just, there a, a good one? No. just an indication that the, the demonic activity in this country is ramping up to an all-time, uh, an all-time, it's, it hasn't even begun to crest yet. But and look, it, I really think that it is this, it really, with me, it really, and this, this relates to uh, a woman that I, I met, uh, was engaged to, almost married, back in Dallas, Texas, uh, uh, back in uh, the late 98, and uh, this is when I really started to become aware of something was wrong, but I didn't understand any of it at that time. But that's yeah. kind of when it started happening. And now I really believe <laughs> that most of it, it's not just aliens that, you know, manipulating people out on the street, you know, to target you. There is definitely a covert behind the scenes Marxist socialistic revolution going on all around us. It's demonic. Yeah. And, it, and, and I, it's definitely people going think, on. Antichrist. Spirit. It is, but the people think that they're doing works of good. They're bringing <sighs> justice to America. They're, oh, you know, they're going to create America, take America to the ne next level, of, uh, blend the good things of it with socialistic things, and create a new utopian. You the, know, and they'll be the first ones shot in the new world order. They'll be the the first ones taken out in the back and shot in the head. Right. So you know, useful idiots. Well, who, John, who uh, I that? thank you. I've got Barbara. Uh, Barbara, Barbara Mar Marcotti has chimed in. Hey, Barb. Can Barb? you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Now we really Good are. Good morning. Up. Barbara, say hello to uh, Brother John, Brother John. Brother Patrick. Patrick. Hi. And Hi, John. Hi, Patrick. Patrick. Hi. Patrick won the big game last night. Ah, uh, of course he did. Amen. Of course he did. That's He's awesome. our winner. Yep. Hey, you guys. It's so sporadic out here, you know. Do you Patrick have snow? Understand. He's in snow, but this is terrible. I can't get anything out. Sporadic you, sound, sporadic email. We still have 300,000 people out of electricity. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Do you guys have electricity? I, I have it, yes. You have it? Oh, man. Okay. Well, but I'm located in a very strategic place, but uh, we had over 750,000 people out of electricity. The trees just broke everything. Wow. We have a lot of trees down, but I have a how neighbor that... I didn't hear you, Trent. How, how deep is it? Uh, you got to say again. How deep is the snow? There is no snow. It's all melted. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's... Yeah, yeah I think... Uh, uh, well, I thought it on TV a couple days ago, actually. You yeah. thought about what? He saw it on TV. How oh, he... okay. Look, you know, but what do you think uh, about the demonic activity ramping up to a level we've never seen before in this country? Ever. Well, these Occupy uh, things, uh, this, they're really like visible manifestation. Okay, go ahead, Barbara. Go ahead, Barbara. No, Trish, but that Occupy thing, every time I look at it, they say, oh, well, a thousand people showed up in Times Square. I mean... Is it really? Is there any there? There, I mean, isn't that? Like, do, no, it's just the way they're covering it. Exactly. It's like it's like the way they uh, the, they covered. Remember uh, the statue when when we uh, quote unquote defeated Iraq. What in the and heck is going on with the sound? Hold on. Here. Hold on, the sound is something's going on with okay. the sound. One at a time. Okay, Frankie is chiming in. So go ahead, Frankie. Yeah, the uh, yeah. I was just saying that they they represented a small crowd of like twenty people as being you know a, a, a whole thing. You know, it wasn't, man. I mean, really, is occupied? Does it mean anything at all? It means that you know, basically, there are some very very power, powerful watch. interests who are pushing it to bring in their um, you know their socialist global globalist socialist new world order. And they, you know, and it's a gulag state. It's a police. It's a police state globally, worldwide, 
And, uh, and they got the community organized, useful right. idiots out there jumping right. up and down. Whom they pay and they feed. <sighs> And they're there to destroy America, and they're there to destroy every institution, every, every corporation, every business, every single person they want to stop. And, and now it's beginning to go violent in Oakland, and, and the latest reports we have, it, it was violent, uh, but then it was cool, cooled off. But it doesn't, you know, this is everything that we've been, if, if Zach, it's, yeah, go ahead. Now you know why Obama put so many people out of work so he could have so many in the streets doing this. Right, Amen. right. It's, he's all part of the plan. He's he the, owns he, this. He's the most evil, awful uh, human being to ever uh, occupy any office in this country. Not that the others were, were, were any, any saints, but he is the worst of the worst. And um, yes. people don't do anything about it. He's, a, he's committed treason already. He ignores laws. He does whatever he wants to do. And then he lavishes himself like this weekend in Cannes on the beach. Uh, you know, having parties with his friends where there are no occu- occupiers down there uh, in the south of France on the uh, on the Mediterranean Sea, they just that's the playground of the rich. That's his real base and his real friends, the ultra rich. And the people, uh, one day, the people in the streets are going to realize that you know a guy like Michael Moore who's down there slumming it, he's rich. He has his own airplane and stuff. I mean, the guy, <laughs> these people are rich. You know, the people that, the celebrities are all rich, They're, they, yeah. you know, but they tolerate them. So it's hypocrisy on steroids. It's, it's, it it's, is. it's, it makes the, I pe- think that the average American uh, right. sees through this and they just uh, are wondering why the mayors of these cities don't just shut these people down. I mean, this is because they're a afraid. lot of illegal activity going because on. Because they're afraid. It's a typical, it's a typical, uh, what they call double speak. Yep. It's like that book that I sent you, Trish. It was an excellent book by Dillinger. Yes. You remember that one? Yep. Yeah, that started way back then. I was wondering, have any one of you ever read the book, The Art of War? By Sun Tzu? Yes. Yes, 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 yes we got it. I've read a, I have a little pocket version of it. It's- oh, chapter one fits what's going on today in the reverse. They're doing the exact reverse. It's no. very interesting. Just read chapter one. Well, I, I, I look at it, and I just I got to look at the bigger picture. This is, you know, I have to look at the bigger picture. I have to go to what the Lord is telling me, because I, I inquire of the Lord hours and hours and hours uh, in the night. And um, look, it's called vengeance, okay? The people in power and the people around the world have slain his prophets, slain his lambs, slain his apostles, slain his people, worldwide, and it's ramping up. And the whole point of the book of Revelation, besides overcoming, which is the main point, but besides that, is the, all the things that go on are due to one reason, vengeance of the Lord to avenge. And he says, be joyous, because when I, when I open that big can of whoop-ass, uh, you know, I'm doing it for you, so I want you to celebrate. Uh-huh. Okay, that's, the, that's what he's saying. It's all about vengeance, yeah. So allowing it to get to this level and allowing it to go off the cliff, i.e. no intercept, it's a vengeance thing. Plus, it also has to do with the wrapping up of the end of time. It has to do with it where at the end of time, there's only so much time meted out for this, for this story that we're all partaking in. And when that time is over, it's over. It's not like you're going to get more time. It's already been written how much time there is. But no man will know the time. However, we can see, like Allah, Matthew 24, all the things that Jesus prophesied coming to pass right now have, have have you guys got an opinion on herman cain and doesn't it start to smell like ross perot attack now it's uh i i think that it's uh gonna backfire they're, start, they're starting to pick on his wife saying she won't speak uh I, hey i wouldn't want to do an interview with greta van Susteren. Um, look, the, the, the point is, is that, you know, the politics can't, isn't going to, is not what's wrong with uh, this country. What's wrong with this country is that there's a huge um, satanic uh, worship symbol called the Washington Monument <laughs> sitting there at, like a middle finger in God's face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to bring that up, Frankie. <laughs> yeah, that, that thing. Uh... I, the, the problem is oh, all the, yeah, man. the, the well, architecture. You know, I mean, figuratively, yes, absolutely right. The architecture I mean, of Washington, D.C. DC is the architecture of Satan. It's the architecture of death. It's the architecture of uh, the whole thing 
is an affront and an abomination unto God. So, I mean, it, it, you know, if God looks at that, there, there is no Romans 13. God didn't appoint those architects to do the, those abominations in the sight of everybody, and everyone's just simply accepted all that, like, oh, that's yeah. normal. It's yeah. not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. At all. Yeah. The pentagram or pentagon, the mm-hmm. Washington Monument, the uh, White House itself, the, symm- the symmetrical nature of the, of the uh, pentagram and Baphomet, the yeah. Baphomet pose of George Washington. George Washington I, I uh, being uh, made on, into a god. On and on. Eh. So, yeah, I have The Art of War on an audio book, and I've never listened to it. It's on my iPod someday if I get bored. Right? Yeah. But yeah. Check it out. Check dude. it out, man. Uh, Mikey, do the, listen to it. It is really good. You know, it it's bores me. Have, I, have I always unab- turn it off. All right, right in time. Okay, Barbara. Do you have the unabridged edition, Frankie? Oh, I, uh, I have no idea. It's from iTunes. <laughs> you know, it's from audible.com. <laughs> oh, you know, it's, it's, a, really, it's really good if you have the unabridged edition. Well, what I was going to say for the people out there, man, is that um, recently I just thought it would be fun to listen to the uh, – because I have the iPod hooked up to my car stereo now. So, you know, it, you, you just push the steering wheel and you can play like an audio book or something. It's pretty cool. So I'm thinking, uh, I want to listen to the Book of Enoch, okay? So I got it, and it's read by a robot. I, c- I couldn't believe it. And it was actually pretty good. It took me about 30 seconds in to figure out that that was read by a computer program, right? And it, it, it's this uh, yeah, tremendous you, opportunity out there, though, yeah, you for don't people have, with... You don't have the unabridged edition. There's an excellent reader. For uh, people it, with time on their hands, though, Barbara, <laughs> and, and, and they need something to do, and they've got a lot of... I'm not saying Z. I'm not saying this, but, you know, somebody out there in the audience, maybe, because you could read a book, you, you know, especially an out-of-copyright book, Read it, put it out there, right, as an audio book, and make a little bit of money, I would think. I mean, you know? You could write a program to read it. Is that what you're saying? The program. No, read it, read it, and produce it, and make it tolerable. Because the robot, it's kind of. I think they should make, it, they there, should make a book out of hey, th- s- Thanks for the Memories from Bryce Taylor. Ooh. I think someone should read that aloud. Ooh, yeah. Oh, Frankie, read speaking it, of man. reading I, aloud, I think you should finish reading uh, Lamb aloud. That was really awesome when you were reading Lamb. Uh, and you just got a few well, chapters. Well, that's a lot of work. It's a big project to read a whole book. That's I a big, know, it's but, a big, you know, right you, you could just do oh. like a chapter a day or something. Isn't Come it on, funny? Tr- trash. You I'm lucky do if it. I clean bigger. my apartment. Chime in there, nah, Barbara. Frankie has, has a great uh, reading voice. He, uh, I'm lucky if I clean my apartment, Trish. I mean, half the time that don't get done. <laughs> Dude. Well, well, speaking you know, he could be on, a good man. reader, but he isn't going to do it. Speaking oh, of lamb. Okay, well. If he's not going to do it, maybe I'll do it. Speaking of Lamb, America is looking very much now like the Lamb, the book, my book, Lamb, that was a, a fictional book, but a, a, I guess it's kind of a prophetic work, because in a sense, uh, America really looks like that now. It's factionalizing. It's breaking into different factions. There's all kinds of wars going on under, uh, you know, under the waves, you know, that you don't see between various groups in uh, various um, you know, armed groups and, and military units and things. It's going to come down to those who are patriotic, obviously, versus those who want this new world order, and they're going to break apart the whole military, and you're going to have like, you know, former black ops forming uh, you know, militias yeah. against you know, um, the federal um, armies, and they're going to be clashing. And um, you, you know, it's going to be a complete total mess, because see, the other side, the side of the demons, the side of Satan is not, you know, the side of George Soros, the side of uh, the New World Order, all that. They're not going to back off. So it's going to go to war, civil war, but it's going to be uh, interesting from a military point of view to see which factions of the military will break away and do the right thing, or which ones will stay loyal to the new state or the 1984, you know, to Goldstein or whatever. Which ones are going to be loyal uh, to the um, totalitarian dictators? Uh, of of uh, you know that that are pulling all the uh, strings from behind the scenes, and you know it's it's uh, oh all of Washington also is is a beacon to bring in spirits. It's you know the Washington Monument itself with the reflecting pool is to bring in spirits, spirits that come in to control all the people in the United States, uh, and you're seeing the the fruits of that control now, um, and. What can I do? I see it happening before my very eyes. I see it going completely to hey, dis- Steph, Yeah. Is, is 
is that the 1111 thing you were talking about? I tried to follow it, but I've had such intermittent connection with internet and like right now listening to you, it's almost like sci-fi. I'm hearing every, every word kind of fractured. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah, and, me, and you're coming in kind of like that because you don't have yeah. a good connection. Sometimes you come in oh. real good and sometimes a but, little... But here's the thing. 1111 is, you know, become a new age marketing concept at this point. Hey, one of the guys in Crazy Lamb said that if you take um, your age and the last two digits of your birth year, uh, add that up, and it, it's, it works for everyone, 1111. Try it. Uh, oh, and there's a movie coming out, 11, 11, 11. There's another movie coming out about, you know, the, 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 some sort of, you know, demonic takeover. There, there are people celebrating interconnectedness. There's an 11, 11 day of interconnectedness, love and light for all people. And all of these are part and parcel. The demons, the love and light crowd, all that is all part and parcel of the same demonic push for this new world order and new rebirth of the new well, world. Well, that's one thing for sure, man. I didn't realize how much I hated those people with all that because they seem kind of harmless to me before no. you started bringing them they're up. They're not. You know? They're not. But, I, yeah, no, they're I, not. I kind of put it together. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're so uh, well, whatever. You, yeah, know, yeah. But. See, you know, Lucifer comes as an angel of light. So you have the love and light crowd, the new age. That's all like an angel of light stuff. And then you have the dark stuff. Which is basically, you know, all these horror movies that are coming out on eleven eleven, and um, basically talking about the day where the demon. Basically, eleven eleven. The, the theme or meme of the movies is this is the day where these demons are going to be unleashed. The portals are going to be opened, and they're going to be contacted and then brought to Earth, where they're going to be able to possess all people and live in the new world as a rebirth. Oh, like the Pod movie. Yeah, it's a very much invasion of the body snatchers. That's right. Yeah. Same kind of thing. And so, you know, the hysteria over the whole thing kind of reminds me of the hysteria over um, the harmonic convergence back uh, b the beginning of this countdown to 2012 of the Mayan calendar. Back, I remember I was at the Bodhi Tree in Los Angeles back then. Shirley MacLaine was very, hot, very big. And uh, it was a 25-year countdown in 1987 in August. Uh, the Harmonic Convergence, August uh, 27th, 28th or something, middle, end of August, uh, to this, um, this countdown time. And, uh, you know, to the end of time. And there would be a new birth, a new consciousness. And what they're saying, on the, they're having a Crystal Skulls opening the portal ceremony in Los Angeles on 11-11. And basically they're, they're, they're celebrating the uh, age of Aquarius, the age of, of love and light, of peace and brotherhood amongst all... <laughs> humans and uh, in concert with the aliens and all the um, the expansion of consciousness into the uh, outer limits and 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 you know you, you know I just uh, it's a train wreck of the par, bar not, this is the biggest train wreck I've ever seen which makes me think and let me chime in on Yahweh's side that I see it I see it clearly we are we are entering that period of the end of time of time actually running out but I'm waiting I'm waiting to see that supernatural activity here. I'm waiting to see supernatural events that have people in awe and cowering and praying to the supernatural beings doing the supernatural things, which is uh, prophesied by um, the Lord to be false, to be, to be absolutely uh, false, absolutely signs and wonders by magicians and sorcerers of a very high level that will dupe people, and I think that's what, they're, uh, what you're going to be seeing. And everyone now is just scrambling to, to, to be in control, and it's... You know, I guess people... Very interesting, uh, very interesting, the whole globe right now. You wouldn't even go that way unless you had, you know, unless you were not just demonic, but you had to make a decision somewhere in your life that you were going to serve the dark side, and even if you call yourself love and light and a new age guy and just all about love and love and love and love and peace and all that, you somehow had to make a decision to rebel against God in order to um, even get to that point. So, Patrick, Whoa. what do you think? Patrick. Hmm? Patrick. Yes. What do you think about this topic? <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, it's kind of one of those things you you think through it. You look, you know, I like to sit back and watch, right? Hmm. And um, I don't know. It's just so many, so so many things are just happening, you know, left and right. And it's and for me, I can just sit back and watch and just. Ask God to, to give to give all the believers strength, because 
we're, we're like we're going to some crazy times here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like honestly, like like I, uh, you know, about what two three weeks ago, like there was like f- flood in Thailand. Mm-hmm. There was earthquake all over the world. Turkey, like, yep. you know, and Barbara is having a um, uh, power power outage. Like, and that's I think Barbara. I, I believe that's the second time it happens. Um, uh, no, the the second the second year in a row it happens, right? Yeah. So it's like, so things are happening all all like all around us, and people are start turning their heads to to what or to who to help. And I know people are going to turn 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 their heads. Some of them are going to turn to the Lord, yes. but most of them are going to turn to the to the wrong people uh, or the wrong person. And, yeah. and and that's when people are going to start trusting, like, you know, the government, or they're going to start trusting people that have the answer, right? They, you know, they're going to start trusting Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, you know, <laughs> like, you know, and, and but well, more and more and, are asking the government for a solution, but the yeah, government, you know, but, government's broke. But in each time, that's when the believers are going to shine. That's when Amen. a voice is going to be heard, like, because in time of distress. You know, people are looking for a voice. You know, when, like, you know, it's, it's like in sports, when 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 you're down and you're losing the game and there's two minutes left, mm-hmm. nobody says anything because everybody's scared. But the one person that says, we can do this, guys, let's do it, you know, everybody looks to him to make to make a big play, to, to make something happen. And the same thing is happening now. They're looking. People mm-hmm. are looking for for something, you know, and and... It's our time to shine wherever we're at in the world, wherever the situation or walk of life we are, it doesn't matter. You know, people are going to turn, you know, to, you know, to believers and they're going to try to hear, hear what, you know, what God is, is telling them, you know? So he, I had a, you know, I had an insight that's, last that's night really good in, word. when I was in, in prayer last night and, and, and the Lord kind of indicated when, when they see one of us coming along, you know, down the street or whatever, they see death, their own. In other words, we're like agents of death, even just by standing there, even if we don't do anything. So I kind of understand from that, from that, how, why they're so hostile, why they will eventually start killing all of us. (laughs) They're killing us all over the world. They're they're killing us all over the world, but it's because we represent the end of their system. We represent, to them, we are death. See, they got it backwards. (laughs) Zach, why don't they see us all come back alive again? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, that, do the same yeah. thing I, that they did when they saw Lazarus risen from the dead. They wanted to go out and kill him again. Yes, uh, absolutely. But they won't be able to because, you know, the, the, the thing is, is it's a supernatural resurrection and supernatural bodies that are, that are incorruptible. Tra- incorruptible. Tra- and I order nice silver, beautiful outfits with a sword at our side. Trish, you and I will dress like Silver warriors. Silver warriors. I always, I want partial to gold. (laughs) Okay. All right. All right. You You can be silver. I'll be gold. Gold wear silver. Okay. No, I'm not afraid. I'm excited about these times. But believe me, exactly. We should. We should be. We should be excited. It is exciting. Totally excited. It is exciting, and I'm a lot of my friends. I was going to say you ought to. You ought to play the Star Spangled Banner after Patrick got done. That that was beautiful, man. Yeah, that was beautiful. (laughs) And uh, people need to be reminded of that. People are starting to remember eternity too. I think more and more people are yeah. kind of thinking about it and remembering stuff. And um, as Brother Thomas would say, it's not it's in your, in our memories, but it's really a glimpse of the future. But then, in a timeless time, you know, the past and the future are, are rendered. There is no past and future, so we're starting to bleed through into eternity. Yeah. Look, we're going to be all right. I don't worry about you. I don't worry about you, John, or you, Brother John, Brother John, Frank, Patrick, uh, Barbara, Trish, you listeners out there. But I'm just encouraging you to be strong because you got nothing to lose. Now, now you're going to be getting that supernatural strength. You're going to be getting that, that willingness to go stand out there and be who you are in the midst of them. And that is a great, that's the standard. That's the, the and, Lord loves and, that. Go ahead. And you know what people, people need to know, like listeners out there, what is death? Seriously, what is death? You know, mm-hmm. for us, it's, it's only going from one side of the street to the other, and that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And 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 because you know what, at the end of the day, we are not me. We are we are we like we are guaranteed. We are guaranteed. We just gotta live out 
our journey. We just got to live out what God's calling us to do. Yeah. Yeah. And Amen. that's all because for sure. at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we can we can go tomorrow, in a month, in ten years, in fifteen years, who, who knows? It, it, it doesn't really matter. But at some point we're gonna be gone. Run but the we race. gotta live on. Run the, the race. Well we'll be gone, what, but then we'll what be, we're being called to do. Yeah, we'll be back again. <laughs> Yeah. In other words, they're gonna. We we are the warning to them. You know, we got, we got a job to do here. We are the warning to them from the other world to say, look, yeah. wake up. You know, you don't don't become a victim here. You have a choice. Wake up, and and you can fulfill that. You know, a beautiful, amazing destiny that God has a plan for each one of us. He loves each one of us. But we are the depository of the source of life. Exactly. And, if you, and Barbara, if you weren't here, you know, and I wasn't here and, and none of us were here, they, the, the they, the ubiquitous they, they wouldn't be here because there'd be no reason for the Lord to sustain it. it, would, it would, the life they get is derived from us and then they want to kill us, which is really killing the goose that laid the golden egg because they have no life on their own. That's the whole point of, the, of Satanism is that you're dead. You know, that there's the only dependence the only dependence you have is over carnal things, you know, to get power from and from the living, that is the, the lambs of God. And there is isn't no isn't that isn't that a wonderful passage in scripture? You will pass from death unto life. Exactly. I love it. Beautif beautifully put. Sure. That that's that, it. Sh that shows you the level of deception of Satan. Yeah, there, there's no there's no profit in the flesh. There's no profit. In other words, there's no profit in things that you know are born and, and die two seconds later. We there's something else that we need to transition to, and the Lord is that bridge to get to the actual real reality that with the home that we all know in our hearts is there and in, in our minds, and we want to go there, and we will go there, and it's going to be unbelievably you know in, it's awesome. going to be so incredible. So hey, Govinda is standing by. Okay. Brother Govinda is going to be with us uh, second hour with Zeph. Well, I want to thank you, uh, John, for uh, Steph, the Steph, new Steph, John. Can you, you tell Govinda I gave him a big hug and a kiss? Because I'm so broken up, I don't know if I'll be able to hear him. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll Barbara. Try. Steph? Okay, well, listen. Give him my love. You got it. We'll do. Uh, Brother John, new John, thank you for calling in today. Sure. Yes. I really, Very it, interesting. It, it was great, and uh, we'll have to talk some more about Newberry Springs. Okay. Okay, and and John, you didn't get a chance to chime in too much, John from the desert, but uh, he's also out there in the California desert. And Patrick and Frankie, thank you, everyone. I have to now get going. Yeah, so, take it easy. God bless you. God all. bless. Okay. God bless. All right, coming back at you. We've rounded the corner. I mean, there's so much to say that I can't get it set in this. So I would urge you to go to um, the Zeph Report online. <laughs> I mean, we get a lot said in a couple hours, but in a lot done, I guess it's done rather than said, yeah? But, you know, you really want to, if you have access to uh, the, the computer or the internet, you can go to um, zephreport.com, uh, zephdaniel.com, zedjaw.com, zedjaw, the musical, uh, my musical, <laughs> my, my, my one-man band name. Um, and you can... You know, there are podcasts that go back for years there that are dealing with, you know, um, the fruit of all, all the things that we've gone through and all the things that we've been processing, like what we were talking to uh, brother, the new Brother John. Um, all those things about gang stalking, all those things about, you know, the aliens, the military industrial complex, the, you know, Satanism, satanic ritual, satanic ritual abuse, um, all that you know, demonic activity that's all going on all around us. And people are acting like, you know, they're whistling by the graveyard. They're acting like they don't see it, but they do. They're just afraid. And uh, now we're going to talk to Govinda. And this is just a perfect segue because we're going to go right, you'll see, we're going to go right in to the same kind of thing. And, and I want to, you know, what I want to talk about this next hour is I want to put a little emphasis on, you know, things of the end. In other words, you know, the, the, the great... A exciting time of this is and not only an exciting time but scripture says rejoice because i'm avenging you you all have taken a, a beating a lot of you you're barely alive and, and your trauma will be gone you will be restored before the sight of them and it will make them they will scream in agony if they see you um as whole as healed as 
you, do you know what I'm saying? Well, let me just uh, not hog. Satan, your kingdom must come down. Satan, your kingdom must come down. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Satan, your kingdom must come down. Gonna pray until they tear your kingdom down. Gonna pray until they tear your kingdom down. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Satan, your kingdom must come down. Come down. 